Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. I've wanted a fly press ever since I knew they were a thing, but it doesn't really seem like new ones are an option. And to coin a term I hear used a lot from older guys around me, they just don't make them like they used to. So let's see if we can take something old, spend a heap of time on it, and then turn it into something that's, well, still old, but shiny. If that sounds like something you're into, hang around to see how this one turns out. So this is where we're going to start. It's not the biggest fly press in the world, but it's got all that old cool appeal. Well, maybe under all this schmud it does. It's an Australian made John Hayne 182A from Sydney. But it can use some love, so we'll get it torn down and knock off all the excess dirt. Just quickly before tearing this down, let's have a really quick look at how these work. There's a large thread or screw that runs through the center of this large casting, joined to a ram at the bottom. Up on top, we have a handle and also a large counterweight that's gonna help us translate the motion into downwards pressing force on that screw. The weight from the top of the screw will end up being the pressing force that's applied at the business end, giving us our pressing action. But back to the teardown. Off comes the stop that sets the depth followed by the wear plates, and the lock nut for holding all the tooling. And I do want to get this ram out. But apparently, I don't have anything big enough to undo this retaining nut. So that can sit for a minute, because surely someone I know has a bigger one that I can borrow. Now this press operated okay before pulling it apart, but it does have some general wear and tear. This is the wear plate from beside the ram, and she's pretty scuffed up, it's got a lot of little sharp edges. Everything else looks like it should be fine, it's just dirty. So I'll give it a hit with some simple green and leave it to soak before starting the endless scrubbing. I want to restore as much of the cool patina that this thing has underneath as possible. So I am trying to be careful not to knock off too much paint. I see heaps of people use simple green for this kind of work, but it doesn't feel chemically enough. It will take off the grease and such, but it has a hard time with the really built up grime, so a little degreaser should help. I will come back and try to clean up some of these scratches in a sec. Then a little of the same treatment on the counterweight. Now I get that this doesn't look much different than when I started, but hang with me. There is some of the cool layers of paint on this thing as seen in its life starting to come through, and we should be able to take it up a notch. So I did the ring around, and I borrowed this bad boy to undo the top nut. Let's be honest, a good portion of pulling stuff apart like this is simply finding out how it works. And this part is pretty clever. In the top of the ram there's a thread, and then there is a threaded sleeve that screws down inside to keep it attached to the main screw. But it's split in half so it can be installed, because this whole contraption definitely wouldn't fit any other way. And then there's the main screw, and there's a lot going on here. There's a taper up top that the handle sits on, then a fine pitch thread for the stop to spin onto, and then an almighty thread. It looks like a square shouldered thread to me. I probably should have looked it up, but if you know what it's called, let me know in the comments below. Then there's a bit of a reduced section for our split nut. What a cool piece of kit. I did go get some more chemically degreaser to try and speed this whole process up a bit, but apparently I can't even use a spray bottle. 
There you go. Spray, spray, spray. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And spray, spray, spray. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And bam, it's as clean as new. Well, probably not even close, but clean enough for what we're trying to achieve. Before the finishing, I'll hit the base plate with a stone to try and get it kind of flatter and knock off any really excessive high spots. I know that I'm not going to get this perfect or anything, and I'll probably make a tooling plate for this at some stage, but just enough to make it smooth to the touch. And now for the finish, and this might be my new favourite thing. I got a tip from a mate about what guys use to clear old patinaed hot rods, and Penetrol came up. I've never used it before, but it's uh, pretty awesome. I'm no expert, but I think it's a thinner use to help paint level out and stick to things a bit better. But brushed on, it seems to penetrate into the surface really well, and it's really easy to apply. So I'll give it a couple of coats and leave them to sit for at least 24 hours to harden up while I get these other jobs knocked out. Now I toss and turn on what to do here. There are heaps of deep scratches on this ram section from where it either wasn't greased properly or it's got some schmutz stuck in there and made a mess. And this big old hunk is hardened, and so is the wear plate it rides against. I could grind it on the mill, but the scratches are deep, and I don't want to change these parts too much dimensionally. So I did just sand these out so there weren't any sharp edges, and gave it a bit better surface finish so hopefully it slides nice and smooth. I highly doubt that this press will see excessive use in my shop, so if I can slow down the wear from here, I'm sure these parts will outlast me. And now onto the main screw, and I find this thing super impressive. As far as I can tell, this is all one piece, but when I think of the setup that would need to try and remake this, like, I'm sure it's possible, but a big undertaking. Multiple threads, a six-sided taper, it's pretty cool. And to keep it looking cool, I'm gonna have a go at lubing it with dry molly. I like the idea of something dry not attracting more grot and dragging up through the whole contraption, so I'll give it a spray, and it can go to the side to firm up. Now the last little cleanup, the wear plate. I'm just going to give this the same treatment as the ram and knock off all the high spots to try and smooth it out a little. I should probably just mount the smooth face against the ram to give it a nice contact area, but it's been working fine all these years and I don't want to mess that up. And she's looking glossy and ready to go, so it's time to put it all back together. In goes the lead screw, and I think that's what the molly should look like. Followed by the ram and then I have a bit better shot of how this split nut works. The two halves go onto the end of a screw, then a thinner lock nut to hold them onto the end. Then this section spins freely on the shaft, so it can get screwed into the ram and locked down. Then a little grease on the wear plate, and yep, that's backwards. Give me a minute to realize. There you go. The slot this rides in is kind of cool too. Because the ram is shaped like a parallelogram, god that's a hard word to say, applying force on one point drives the ram back and across all in one motion, while keeping everything straight. Then the last couple of parts, the height stop can go on and it can all get locked down.
And then the crown jewel on top. Then a few quick adjustments to get it all ready to go and we can finish this one off. Now let's start this bit off by saying I took the easy way out on the stand and need to have a little bit of a rant about it. I had every intention of making a stand for this, but steel prices in my area seem to be crazy at the moment. I called up my local steel guys and they're no longer breaking full sheets and I wanted two different thickness plates for the stand. So when I got a rough estimate back, to buy the full sheets of 6mm and 10mm plate, the stand was going to cost me about 1600 bucks. Now I know I could have played around with ideas and come up with a different design, but to be honest, if I couldn't do what I wanted, it kind of took the wind out of my sails. But I did find a small heavy duty bench online that was about perfect dimensionally, and the handle when spinning would just stay inside the border of the table, and can handle the weight of this thing just fine. And it cost me about 350 bucks delivered, which seemed like a much better alternative. And it even came with about 100 bucks worth of casters that I was going to have to buy for an upcoming project. So I'll call it a win. To secure it to the top, I'll get it just about where I want it, drill some holes to line up with the bolt holes in the base of the press and send them home. Then I'll mark out the centre hole to give me some idea of where to go. For the record, moving this thing even without the counterweight on is a struggle. Like I know I'm basically a picture of fitness, but this is a beefy boy. I don't need this hole to be perfect. The hole saw I have is slightly bigger than the hole in the press base. So close enough should be, well, close enough. And then I can get bolted at the top and I'll finish the hole saw from the other side and try to reduce the tear out a little bit. And using a deburring tool on laminate, that is satisfying. Then one more big lift to get the press into its final resting place. Then tap the bolts home that I obviously did an amazing job of lining up. Lock it all down and we're done. I get that the patina look is not for everyone and I really did think a lot about painting this one but I just couldn't cover up all that old cool history like every chip and layer has a story to tell. I'm in love with this thing and some tooling will be coming soon so stick around if that's something you'd like to see. And for anyone who hung around to the end of the video this is for you. Thanks for hanging out everyone. If you like the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. See you on the next one.